Good morning, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we're about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this morning, we are going to look at the whole matter of seismic attacks and or seismic occurrences. We are seeing an increase in the numbers of earthquakes, particularly in the Caribbean. And I'll be focusing on Jamaica today because for a very important reason. So let me have you listen to this um, this brief video and then I shall get into the task at hand, okay? Shall we? Tell us a while, Vaughn. They found seven billion barrels of oil in Jamaica and you heard nothing about it in the media. Look at this article. It was published on July 12th. So a few weeks later, cartel come out and everybody I load up themselves. This is the problem with y'all Jamaicans. Y'all want to be entertained instead of focusing on the things that can heal your pain. Seven billion barrels of oil is equivalent to the length of 3.5 million football fields. And based on the current oil rates, it's equivalent to three times the current GDP of Jamaica. This can be a game changer. But time that I worry about money and up business, boy, you y'all steady focusing on the things that don't matter. And that's why you're getting misused and abused. But if we come together and unite and do what's right, then we can't lose. Very good. And, you know, we want to applaud that young man for giving us that very important information because it is indeed correct, as he says, that there has been discovery or there has been recent discovery of petroleum oil in Jamaica. And that is something that has not been highlighted. We have not been sounding the alarm. It seems to me that a lot of what is done in Jamaica, particularly as it concerns money, is kept in secrecy, shrouded in secrecy, and government is not particularly happy with divulging these sort of important developments to the Jamaican people, because we know that it is the global oligarchs, the global economic oligarchs, who will benefit from any such um, discovery that is found in that country. Now, the Jamaica Observer did carry that article to be fair to the um, media, right? They had a piece of information here, and it was published, as the young man stated, on July 12th. And the title of the article is The Long Search for Oil, Dare We Begin to Hope Again. And uh, let me see if I can share my screen with you so you can see what I am reading from. But this is from the Jamaica Observer, an online Jamaica newspaper, Jamaica newspaper rather. Now, let me clip this here uh, and see if we can see. Yeah, I, I think you can see the article now. So many things are popping up on the screen. So let me see if I can see what I'm reading. Now we have, after almost eight decades searching for oil on and offshore Jamaica, the people behind the latest phase of the exploration, while clearly trying to contain themselves, are behaving suspiciously as if they know something the rest of us are waiting to hear. And earlier this year, British-owned United Oil and Gas and the Jamaican-owned Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica, PCJ, took the bold step of organizing an investor evening at Jamaica's High Commission in London. It was the biggest indication yet that the principals are trying to sign partnerships for commercialization and production of the estimated 7 billion barrels of oil that they have apparently confirmed in Jamaican territory, right? And we have not heard about that. Right, the Cliff Hughes and all of these people, they are more interested in talking about Vibes Cartel. You know, I had a friend who told me that, yes, Vibes Cartel is important to talk about because he's an entertainer. Now, is he? Yes, he might be an entertainer, but can we entertain ourselves into poverty? I think we are. We have begun. We have been doing that for decades anyway. So that is what we do. We like to entertain ourselves while others are busily taking from, uh, uh, from the stealing our resources from us and whilst we are we find ourselves engaged in frivolous activities. The news has been slow to trickle back to Jamaica and has certainly not hit the front pages, but those who have been doggedly following the search, which began officially in the 1950s, would have noticed that the excitement has reached levels not seen before. Now we know that oil also has been found in Guyana. I am not sure if it is benefiting the 
majority of the populace, or as I've stated, it's for the minority elites, right? And based on what I have read so far, it seems to me more that, that there's more exploitation than using that sort of resources to build the island of, not the island, but the country of Guyana. Now, spokespersons have not been sparing in their use of superlatives to describe the potential volume of oil the explorers believe they have found along the entire south of the island, which they call Walt Morant License. The Walton Morant License, I beg your pardon. So this is the information that they have given, 7 billion barrels of oil. United Oil has calculated that break-even point for drilling in Jamaica is $25 per barrel or a fraction of the current $77 a barrel that oil is fetching on the world market. The bright outlook favors the company finding a drilling partner to cut down on the 30 million US dollars estimated cost to drill. The various Jamaican governments have rather impressively stayed with the oil exploration projects through the ups and downs, even when a fair number of large companies have come with great plans, but soon after packed up their equipment and departed. And why have they departed? Is it because we are not ready to do business? Nobody knows, right? The enduring belief is that even with the wild fluctuation in oil prices on the world market, finding oil in Jamaica could mean replacing imports of up to two billion US dollars a year with indigenous supplies in an energy hungry nation. It's interesting that we are we're actually importing that amount of oil per, per annum. Right. And who is benefiting from this? You know, are Jamaicans really benefiting from two billion dollars worth of oil being imported into the economy every year? I mean, are we having electricity throughout the island? Do we have frequent load sheddings? Right. And are we having a large manufacturing base in Jamaica? Why are we having why is this bill so hefty? I know that oil is expensive, don't get me wrong, but we should see some amount of productivity and we should not be having the frequent load sheddings that I hear happen there quite frequently on the island. So that's very strange, something that we need to investigate more, right? We need to investigate more. But based on what I have read in terms of the discovery of oil in Jamaica, and the large quantities thereof that we've just read, that we've just seen, right? I am wondering, it, it struck me as I read because I have a curious mind. So my curiosity was aroused. And I thought for one moment, the fact that they have found so much oil on that small island, is it, the, is there some correlation between the frequent earthquakes that we're now witnessing and the drilling of oil wells or oil fields in Jamaica. And it led me to do a little research on the internet. And here's what I came up with, not necessarily about Jamaica, but this is the information with regard to oil drilling and also earthquakes, the occurrences, the frequent occurrences of earthquakes. So let me share some of these information with you because I'm not gonna have a long video today so that you can at least do your own research, right? And that your curiosity can, can also be aroused. But here we have from the end, the CNBC um, news website, it says here, scientists are certain that drilling is causing earthquakes, right? So while they're drilling a lot of oil, it is going to cause a lot of earthquakes. And we're hearing them predicting that there's going to be, uh, you know, uh, seven point whatever um, earthquake, you know, that the earthquake is going to be at that level on the scale, on the Richter scale, is going to be about seven. They're calling for that. Um, what do we measure the earthquakes in again? I forgot, but that is what we're going to have in the for the next um for the next earthquake. They're predict that they're predicting for Jamaica. I never knew that you can predict earthquakes, but you know, these people seem to be more interesting than we really take them to be, right? Um, as a matter of fact, I should have shown you this. Um, but let's go here. Let's let's not digress. So we have scientists certain that drilling is causing earthquakes. With the evidence coming in from one study after another, scientists are now more certain than ever that oil and gas drilling is causing hundreds upon hundreds of earthquakes across the U.S. 
And I think that that can also be applied to the Caribbean region. So far, the quakes have been mostly small and have done little damage beyond crackling plaster, toppling bricks, and rattling nerves. But seismologists, seism seismologists rather, <laughs> warn that the shaking can dramatically increase the chances of bigger, more dangerous quakes. Now, I would have thought that the more frequent they are, then it perhaps would release of the tension. But they're suggesting here that when you have these numerous shakings, that they eventually will cause bigger and more dangerous quakes. And that's for one of the reasons why they're perhaps predicting a seven point, a seven, you know, point whatever earthquake in Jamaica. Um, up to now, the oil and gas industry has generally argued that any such link requires further study. But the rapidly mounting evidence could bring heavier regulation down on drillers and make it more difficult for them to get projects approved. So we see that. Let us dig into another article here. And that is this is coming from the Stanford University, right? And this is an Ivy League university in the United States. So this is not, if you think it is um, conspiracy, then let it be. We have here earthquakes from oil field wastewater. So we have underground disposal of wastewater from fossil fuel production in the nation's largest oil field is causing long dormant faults to slip in a way that could damage wells across to new analyses of satellite and seismicity my uh, seismicity uh -huh, data, right? So I think I've correct, I've pronounced that word correctly. <laughs> seismicity, yeah, that's the word. Now the nation's biggest oil field ports that lay dormant for millennia are now being activated by injection of oil field wastewater into shallow disposal wells, according to a pair of Stanford University studies. The research details how fluid pumped into wells just a man or two below ground has caused hundreds of earthquakes since 2014 in a seismic hotspot of West Texas Permian Basin oil field. It also suggests continued injections longer term could damage wells that cross the once stable faults. So we're seeing here that the more they are digging for oil or digging for the discovery and they dig the deeper that they dig that you know these whatever liquid that comes up um and perhaps it interacts with the plates the liquids that come from the, the, the earth um can create seismic events right can create an earthquake and we have been having frequent or we have been hearing of frequent earthquakes in Jamaica in recent times. And we're wondering if that is somehow linked to the exploration to the that they're doing there in terms of trying to find oil. It's time for leaders to be very, very frank with us and to be candid and to be transparent with the Jamaican people. Oftentimes they do not know what is happening and they, the authorities that be do not wish to let them know what is happening but i would like to know if in some way the this discovery this oil discovery is creating or causing the tremors the frequent earthquakes that we have been witnessing that jamaica has been seeing in recent times now let me see this is coming from the conversation and they're suggesting the same thing that why is oil and gas activity causing earthquakes and can we reduce the risk, right? So let me see if I can share my screen with you. But let me read it for you. They are saying here, if you've been following the news lately, chances are you've heard about or even felt earthquakes in the central United States. During the past five years, there has been an unprecedented increase in earthquakes in, the, in North America or in the North American mid-continent region previously considered one of the most stable on earth. According to a recent report by Oklahoma, uh, ge geological survey, Oklahoma alone has been seismicity rates increased 600 times compared to historic levels. So Oklahoma, Oklahoma alone has seen seismicity rates increase 600 times compared to historic levels. Right? So that's interesting. 
according to a recent report by the Oklahoma Geological Survey. I think I'm repeating myself. The state has gone from experiencing fewer than two magnitude three earthquakes per year to greater than two per day, the report found. Similarly, my home state of Texas has experienced a near tenfold increase in magnitude three earthquakes or greater in the past five years. The recent uptick in earthquakes in Texas, Oklahoma, and several other central United States states raises an obvious question. What is causing all of this seismicity? That's the question being asked. And they are saying several factors can promote the occurrence of earthquakes. There are natural causes, of course, caused by shifting of Earth's plates, the advance and retreat of glaciers, the addition or, or removal of surface water or groundwater, and the injection or removal of fluids due to industrial activity. Right. So studies, including two reports issued in April, indicate that human activities, including activities related to oil and gas extraction, are beginning to play a significant role in triggering earthquakes in the central United States, right? So that's very, very interesting for us to understand. And it is something that I was sort of musing, you know, um, in my head last night as I, you know, went through the papers, Jamaican papers and saw that there was another seismic activity yesterday in Jamaica. And one happened last Friday. I think that was 5.5 .5 on the Richter scale. Right. Um, and yesterday it might have been 4.5. That is what I read. And I sort of was contemplating why are we witnessing so many, you know, sizable earthquakes? I just want you to know that we have earthquakes every day. Every day you have tremors, right? The earth is con constantly in motion, right? But the fact when we're feeling those, you know, 4.5 and, and above, we have to be concerned. And the Jamaican papers have been warning people, Jamaicans, that they should be should brace themselves for a 7.0 magnitude earthquake um, in the future. Now, how do they know that that is going to happen? We are living in some very dangerous times as we speak. And I remember, quite frankly, in 2017, was it 2017, I believe, um, just after Donald Trump had won the elections in the United States, that Anthony Fauci, actually predicted that there was going to be an outbreak of a certain, you know, you know, he was literally predicting the pandemic, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic. But let us see what Fauci said here at Georgetown University. And I'm wondering if we're witnessing another replay of them telling us that there is going to be, you know, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake in Jamaica or across the Caribbean region. We don't know, but I still think we need to do more research on the oil exploration and to see how much that might be contributing to the frequent occurrences of earthquake within this region. So often we take things for granted and we believe everything our leaders tell us that yes, it's just natural occurrence, but yeah, but this is not normal. So let us see what is what, but let us listen to Fauci what he says here in 2017. Given, as you heard from the introduction, that I have been around for a while and have had the opportunity and, and the privilege and the pleasure of serving in five administrations, um, I thought I would bring that perspective to the topic today is the issue of pandemic uh, preparedness. And if there's one message that I want to leave with you today based on my experience, and you'll see that in a moment, is that there is no question that there will be a challenge, the coming administration in the arena of infectious diseases, both chronic infectious diseases in the sense of already ongoing disease, and we have certainly a large burden of that, but also there will be a surprise outbreak. And I hope by the end of my relatively short presentation, you will understand why history the history of the last 32 years that I've been the director of NIAID will tell the next administration that there's no doubt in anyone's mind that they will be faced with the challenges that their predecessors were faced with. So, but so yeah, so that was that speech was given by Anthony Fauci at Georgia University just before the arrival or uh, the formal investiture ceremony of Donald J. Trump to the presidency of the United States in 2017, 
remember, he won the election in 2000, November of 2016, and he would have been formally inaugurated in January of 2017. And Fauci was making the speech prior to the president's arrival to Washington. And how the question is, how did Fauci know about this surprise outbreak that would have happened under that, that president, right? And he says a surprise outbreak, right? So it means therefore that it was a surprise for him. How would he know? Because something is a surprise if it's not happening out of your not knowing that it's going to happen. But somehow he knew that a surprise pandemic. It also sounds very oxymoron in the sense that maybe some people knew about it, but the, for the most part, most citizens did not know um, what was happening. And then we learned about what was happening in, in, in Wuhan and all of that mess. I can't go through it here on this channel. But the fact of the matter is that we need to find out from our government because it's something is shrouded in secrecy. If we have seven, if, we, if, if they, these oil exports, experts, right? These oil discoverers, whatever they are, if they have found 7 billion barrels of oil in Jamaica, and of course they would have been digging up fields and stuff like that, is that activity related to the frequent occurrences of the seismic attacks that we have been seeing in Jamaica in recent times? I think it's time for us to ask that question, and I think we need to get an urgent response from the government. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you like, share, and subscribe. Remember now to like the videos because that's the only way that they will be shared on the platform. Also, be sure to leave a comment because it triggers the algorithm to share the videos with as many people on the platform. If the videos are not liked, neither is there very, very few comments, then the videos will not shared that is the business of youtube youtube and that's how they actually you know um deal with the videos we're not living in democracy anymore so i hope that you understand that information is now commercialized and you just have to deal with it as it is right that's the world we live in welcome to our wonderful world isn't it thank you all the best to you